Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my review of the Sigma 90mm f2.8 DGDN, a compact short telephoto prime lens for full frame mirrorless cameras that costs around $650 or 550 British pounds. And at the time I made this review, available in Sony E and Leica L mounts. Come on, everyone, let's all wish at the same time, and maybe Sigma will also do Canon RF and Nikon Z mount versions. It's worth a shot, right? Sigma loaned me a pre production sample in the E mount to try out. The 90mm 2.8 was launched in September 2021, alongside a new 24mm f2 seen here, both joining Sigma's steadily growing contemporary i series. Here's the new 24 and 90mm flanking the earlier 35mm f2 in the middle. Add the 65 f2, 45 2.8 and 24 3.5 and you now have 6 compact models to choose from. The 90mm 2.8 becomes the longest in the series to date, a perfect focal length for portraits whether you're shooting stills or video and I'll show you both along with close up and landscape comparisons in just a moment. Before diving in, a big thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this review. Now, short telephoto lenses may be ideal for capturing new portraits, but you may not always have all of the time or even the opportunities you need to capture all of the subjects you'd like to complete a project. This is where a Storyblocks subscription proves invaluable, giving you unlimited access to an enormous and diverse library of royalty-free video, audio and photos. Storyblocks are also committed to creating a library that represents all of us. Their restock initiative hired creators from marginalised communities to include more diverse and inclusive content authentically portraying people who are typically underrepresented in stock libraries. Whatever you're making, a Storyblocks subscription has you covered. The unlimited all-access plan provides full access to all their stock video in 1080 and 4K resolutions, along with After Effects templates, photos, illustrations, music and even sound effects, which you can use as much as you like in any of your projects, allowing you to create your authentic story. Learn more about Storyblocks in the link below. Now back to the Sigma lens. Now the f2.8 aperture may not be the fastest around, but it does allow the lens to be pretty compact. In fact, at 64 by 60 mil and weighing just 295 grams, the 92.8 is one of the smallest short telephoto lenses for full frame cameras with autofocus around. For comparison, here's Sony's slightly cheaper FE 85mm 1.8 on the right, which at 78 by 82 mil and 371 grams may still be considered light, but it is notably chunkier due to its faster aperture. Now there's loads of short telephoto lenses around, but since these two models cost roughly the same, I'm going to show you how they directly compare. In terms of design and build, the Sigma 90 2.8's aluminium barrel looks and feels more premium to me than the Sony, more akin to the Zeiss Loxia 85 2.4 but half the price and with autofocus. Like other Sigma Contemporary i series models, it's weather sealed at the mount with a rubber grommet but not throughout the barrel. Sony also claims weather sealing on the 85 1.8 but I couldn't see a rubber ring on the mount. In terms of controls, there's a chunky switch for auto and manual focus a clicky aperture ring from f2.8 to f22 in one third increments with an A position for body control and a narrow but smooth and nicely damped manual focusing ring. Sony's FE85 1 1.8 sports a customizable focus hold button but no aperture ring on this model, relying instead on body based control alone. Meanwhile there's a slightly wider manual focusing ring than the Sigma. Like other models in the Contemporary Eye series, Sigma supplies not one but two lens caps with a 92.8, so as well as the usual spring-loaded plastic cap, there's an additional metal disc which attaches magnetically with a satisfying snap, and the magnet certainly feels strong enough to keep it in place too. With the hood mounted though, this second cap is a little awkward to fit or remove, so it's arguably a bit of a novelty, but I do like that Sigma's trying something different here. Oh, and the filter thread is 55mm. Now at this price point, you might expect a basic plastic hood, but Sigma supplies its contemporary eye series with aluminium hoods that continue the ribbed style of the lenses for a classy vintage look and feel. Now it is of course a very personal choice, but I really do like the way that these lenses look. For comparison, here's the Sony FE85 1.8 with its plastic lens hood, and when fitted, it is a much larger proposition. Ok, let's check out the focusing speed and for my tests in this review, I used a Sony A7 Mark III as it was the best body I had access to at this time. You're looking at single AFS mode where as usual there's a minor contrast based wobble to confirm the focus but it's still pretty swift. And for reference, here it is again in continuous AFC mode where the phase detect system avoids that wobble. 
For comparison, here's the Sony FE85 1.8 in AFS mode, where you can see the shallower depth of field at f1.8, but also more visible focus breathing as it adjusts between the two bottle distances. And now in continuous AFC mode for reference once again. Here's the same test for video with the A7 Mark III filming in 4K and with the Sigma 90mm at f2.8 and using continuous autofocus to pull focus between the bottles smoothly and confidently. It's very quiet too. Again, notice how there's very little focus breathing here. And for comparison, here's the Sony FE 85mm at 1.8 where again you'll notice the potential for a shallower depth of field but also that more visible focus breathing. Next for a face detection test with the Sigma 90 2.8, again for movies in continuous AF with wide area and human eye detection enabled. The 90mm focal length is perfect for portraits where the stills or video, and while my pre-production lens took a moment to react to changes in distance here, it still refocused successfully. And now here's the Sony 85 at 1.8, where it too can take a moment to react to changes, and again while the depth of field is shallower, there is that distracting change in magnification due to focus breathing. Sticking with this scene, here's a still portrait shot with the Sigma 90mm at f2.8. Now, while the f2.8 aperture may not be particularly fast, when you couple it with the short telephoto length, you can still achieve an attractive blurred background. Now, here's the Sony FE85 at f1.8, where you can see how much more blurring you'll achieve with its faster f1.8 aperture. Place them side by side with the Sigma on the left, and it's clear that the f1.8 lens on the right will, unsurprisingly, blur the background more from the same distance. So the question for all you Boca fans out there is whether the Sigma delivers enough blurring at f2.8, and of course also, which rendering between those two lenses you prefer. Let's also take a closer look at the detail from both lenses, but I'd say the Sigma on the left is actually a little bit crisper overall, at least around my eyes, but you may prefer one result over the other. And for reference, I've now swapped out the Sony 1.8 image on the right for one with the lens close to the same f2.8 aperture as the Sigma on the left. Now, between these two, I'd still say the Sigma is a little bit crisper, but the bokeh is a little bit softer on the Sony. So, do you have a preference between them for portraits? Next, for the rendering of bokeh balls from close range with the Sigma 90mm 2.8 near to its closest focusing distance, starting wide open at f2.8 and gradually closing down in one-stop increments. At the maximum aperture, the blobs take on the usual cat size shape towards the corner, but they're fairly clean with minimal outlining. They also become quite circular at f4, before then revealing the shape of the 9 blade diaphragm system as that aperture gets smaller. Let's briefly return to the Sigma 90 at f2.8, which you'd expect to be less impressive than the Sony at f1.8. But the Sigma can focus much closer, quoting a minimum distance of 50 centimeters. So let's compare that to the result from the Sony 85 1.8 at its closest focusing distance of 80 centimeters, and it's clear that any benefit of its faster f1.8 aperture is lost in this comparison. Here they are side by side. Of course, from the same distance, the Sony will win in terms of the amount of blurring, but if you are able to get close to your subject, the Sigma has the potential to deliver a shallower depth of field. Plus, of course, the closer focusing distance of the Sigma 90 makes it more useful for photographing small subjects. I could reproduce a subject 145mm wide from the closest distance with the Sigma, compared to 275mm wide from the Sony. This is a key advantage of the Sigma 90mm f2.8 over the Sony 85 1.8. Okay, now for performance at a distance, with my beach scene angled as usual so that details go right into the far corners. Before taking a close look at the detail, I wanted a quick look at geometric distortion, starting with the Sigma 90mm 2.8 with distortion compensation on the Sony a7 Mark III set to off, which is the default setting. With this setting, the Sigma lens exhibits some barrel distortion, so for my in-camera JPEG tests, I've changed this setting to Auto, where you can now see the distortion becomes better corrected, with only a minor crop to the field of view. You can also apply it in post to RAW files. So here's the view with the 90mm at 2.8, and taking a closer look in the middle of the frame reveals very fine details right out of the gate, even at the maximum aperture. In my test, closing the aperture further didn't make any visible difference to sharpness or contrast in the middle of the frame. Heading out into the far corner, and you'll see the degree of detail remains very high, and there's only very minor darkening due to vignetting too. As I gradually close the aperture, you'll see there's little to be gained in sharpness, proving the Sigma 90 is performing very well from the outset. This is a lens you'd be very happy using wide open. 
Okay, now here's the enlarged view from the middle of the frame with the Sigma 92.8 on the left and the Sony 85 1.8 on the right, both at their maximum apertures of f2.8 and f1.8 respectively. The Sony slightly shorter focal length means the details are a little smaller here, but they're both performing similarly in the middle in terms of sharpness. But head out to the corners and the Sony on the right becomes noticeably softer at the maximum apertures. Of course it's operating at a faster aperture here, but even as I close the Sony down it doesn't begin to match the corner sharpness of the Sigma 90 until you close it to around f5.6 to f8. So the Sigma 90 is sharper across the frame at large apertures, at least when both lenses are focused in the middle of the frame. Just before wrapping up, a focus breathing test for the videographers out there, starting with the Sigma 90mm 2.8 at infinity and gradually focusing manually to the closest distance and back again. Now as you saw in my autofocus tests earlier, the Sigma 90 is virtually bereft of any focus breathing at all, which means that you don't see the field of view magnify or shrink as you focus from one distance to another, and this makes it ideal for video use. In contrast, here's what happens when you focus the Sony FE85 1.8 from infinity to the closest distance and back again. Notice how the field of view magnifies almost like a zoom lens as the Sony focuses closer. And while it does start a little wider than the Sigma 90, as you'd expect, it actually ends up effectively longer when it's focused close. Now you could consider this as a bonus additional focal length, and it's no bad thing for still portraits, but videographers should be aware that you will see the change in magnification as you focus this lens. Now it's time for my final verdict and as I wrap up my review of the lens I'll show you a bunch of images I shot with the Sigma 90mm 2.8 DGDN on the A7 Mark III and as always you can access the original images for closer inspection via my review of the lens at cameralabs.com. Sigma's 90mm f2.8 DGDN is a very appealing lens for Sony and L-mount mirrorless owners who want a short telephoto lens for portraits or details without the heft or cost of faster models. The f2.8 focal ratio may not be the fastest around, but it can still deliver attractive shallow depth of field effects, and even more so if you can exploit the pretty respectable minimum focusing distance. Details are also very sharp across the frame, even at the maximum aperture, and videographers will appreciate the minimal focus breathing. I'm also fond of Sigma's vintage styling and metal construction that extends to the supplied hood. Now it would be nice if the weather ceiling extended beyond the mount and if the aperture ring had been declickable, but the overall proposition remains very appealing for the money. Sony's FE85 1.8 is a key rival for E-mount owners that gives you more background blur for the same money, but it is softer in the corners, it won't focus as close, it suffers from worse breathing and it's physically larger. If you want to match the quality with a fast aperture, you'll need to spend more on a premium f1.4 model and of course lug around a heftier lens. So with excellent results from a compact and affordable design, the Sigma 90mm 2.8 DGDN looks set to become a favourite of portrait photographers who prefer smaller and lighter kits. And that's it for another lens review. I've tested most of Sigma's other lenses including the 24mm f2 launched alongside this one so do check them all out here on YouTube or in the lenses section at cameralabs.com. Which only leaves me to kindly request your consideration of a like and a follow or perhaps even a coffee donation if you found any of it particularly useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.